uh, about two weeks ago, I entitled the message Only One Way In, and that's the door to the ark. That as huge and as massive as the ark was, God only provided one entry. And you can see all the signs up over there just to remind us, you know, when we're going through the, the traffic around us, we're going to make sure that if it says one way, that we obey one way. And that's what God made the provision for with the ark. That there was only one way in. And, you know, we looked at the scriptures that confirmed, firstly, that God set the door of the ark in its side. Genesis 6.16, and then Jesus emphasizing and highlighting in John 10.9 that I am the door. And the people of his time, you know, when they heard that, they knew that he was referring to the ark. And the fact that the ark had only one door. We looked at it, and, and we keep coming back to this verse. That, you know, Noah found grace, favor in God's eyes. And last week I highlighted that he did not say that he found favor or grace in the eyes of, of people. Because, see, that's the challenge that we have. That when we choose to walk for the Lord and in the direction of the Lord, sometimes there's going to be a tugging away from that call. There's going to be a detraction, a distraction, and then a deterrence to walking that way. But you know, Noah, even though he was in the world, he was not of the world. So God doesn't want us to live in cocoons, in bubbles, and wrap ourselves with cotton wool, and be isolated from the world. No, He doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to be in the world, but not of the world. He wants us to be there, even as we prayed and we, and we shared earlier, that God wants us to be the light in the darkness. He wants us to be the salt that adds His flavor, that brings people to this saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then today, in our message, I wanted to speak about Methuselah. Now, Methuselah, we all know Methuselah. Children know Methuselah because they learn about him in, in, in kids' church, in Sunday school, as the oldest person that ever lived. Well, Methuselah was given the name by his father, Enoch. So he, that made him a son of Enoch. But in relevance to our message, that Methuselah was Noah's uh, grand, uh, grandfather lived for 969 years. He died significantly, and in relevance to our message today, he died after the ark was built, but just before the flood. Now, why is that significant? Because his father, you know, prophetically gave him the name Methuselah, which means his death shall bring judgment. So this is why I say it was very significant that Methuselah died just before the flood. Because what did we say the flood was? God's judgment. And this is where there was a fulfillment and a real prophetic utterance by Methuselah's father Enoch in naming him his death shall bring judgment. Now praise the Lord that even in judgment we learn, but Noah found grace in God's eyes. Now Noah's father, Lamech, or Lamech, named his son Noah. And this is what Noah meant. This one shall bring us rest and comfort. Genesis 5.29 tells us that, that as much as Noah's grandfather was going to bring judgment when he died, Lamech named him Noah, that this one shall bring us rest and comfort. That even in the judgment, Noah was going to bring rest. And that's his name. The name Noah, as we've spoken about the last few week, weeks, means rest. New ark in the Hebrew is rest. And if we replace Noah's name with rest into verse Eight of Genesis chapter 6, then we find, but rest found grace. And that's what it is. Resting in God. Resting in God finds God's grace and salvation. Because that's what grace does. Paul, the apostle, reminds us in Ephesians 2, uh, verses 8 to 9, that we are saved by grace through faith, and then he highlights, not works. And the opposite of rest is works. 
that when we are not at rest, then we are in a position of works. We are in a position of, of being a busy body. And that's what I highlighted. Uh, if I'm not going to go too much into it because on the 26th of September, when I spoke on Hebrews 11, the message was entitled, Faith is Equal to Rest. So if you get a chance, I'll, I'll even share that uh, YouTube message about uh, faith is equal to rest. Because that's what it is. That by faith, Noah came to being, came to building the ark. So by faith, we have that entry into rest. Faith in God brings us into the rest, which brings us into His grace, which brings us into salvation. And that's where we see that God wants us to know that when we rest in Him, when we cease from our works, when we cease from doing things in our own strength and trying to find a way to God on our own strength, we are able to have that grace. We are able to have that salvation, that moment of peace and rest which the people in the world do not have. And the verse that I expanded on in that uh, 26th uh, September message was that Hebrews here, chapter 3, verses 18 to 19, it is clear in referring to the rebellion in the wilderness, the Bible was able to highlight to us that because they were disobedient, because of their disobedience, God says clearly that they wouldn't enter His rest. So they could not enter in because of unbelief. Chapter 3 verse 19 of Hebrews says that clearly. And I looked at that and I said, wow. As much as that referred to the land of Canaan, the land of milk and honey, the promised land, that because of their unbelief, they could not enter into the promised land. I looked at that and I said, wow, you know what? How relevant is that to the ark? To Noah's ark, that they could not enter into the ark because of their unbelief as well. Because they did not mix their faith with belief. And as a result, God did not allow them to enter into the ark. So there's such a similarity in that. Because you look at Genesis chapter 7 and verse 1, the invitation was given. God gave the invitation. He said to Noah, come into the ark you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. And we know that in Noah's generation, if we think things are bad in our generation, it was equally as bad as then. And I say equally because I really believe that even as Jesus said in Luke 17, 26, so as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in my coming. I believe that the Lord is on his way. If you look at the signs around and everything, I had, a, I had a discussion with someone that said to me earlier in the week, ah, but according to Matthew 24, unless the gospel is preached to all the nations, then only would Jesus come. True, but can you tell me that all the nations of the world haven't heard the gospel? With the, with the technology that we have now, and the way that missionaries and, and, and outreach organizations have been sharing the gospel far and wide, are we confident that the whole world has not heard the gospel? Even Romans chapter 1 says, no one is with excuse to say that they don't know about God. Because even his invisible attributes are made manifest in the visible. Everything, all of creation reveals his glory. So I don't, I don't think that we are in a place where the gospel hasn't reached the ends of the globe. I really believe that the time is near. And even as we see each year, God has given Noah the invitation because he was righteous. And when we spoke about it, two weeks ago I said that as much as we did, we began the study of Hebrews chapter 11, we started it with Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38, because that's where I said Hebrews chapter 11 began. Because in verse 38 of chapter 10, it says that, and the just, the righteous, shall live by faith. And that's what God is honoring Noah for. Noah entered the ark, not because he was a good person, not because he did charitable deeds, not because... You know, he prayed facing a certain direction or he chanted certain things so many times. He entered the ark because he was righteous in God's eyes. He was just. Through faith, Noah entered in. And that faith was through Jesus Christ. And there's no other way but through Jesus Christ. And that's how God gave the invitation to come. Come, Noah. Come, you and your family. And that invitation is extended to everyone. Can we see the similarity in Jesus' message, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, where Jesus used the same word. He said, come. And he gave the invitation. 
to all those who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? I will give you Noah. I will give you rest. I will give you a cessation from your works, from your anxiety, from your worries, from your burdens. Come to me. And that's the good news. That's the good news that God gives us. And the message that he's given us. Even in the story of the ark, we see Jesus there. No matter where you look in the Bible, through the eyes of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is there. You know, off note, I highlighted that the ark only had one entrance. But you know what's another equally important point to remember? Is that in God's blueprint, in God's detailed plan to Noah in building the ark, I think God made a mistake. He left out the rudder, the sails, and oars. Do you think God made a mistake? Absolutely not. The ark had no rudder, no sails, no oars. Why? Why would God not provide the building, the making of these, which are necessary for a vessel on water? You find me a vessel today on the water that doesn't have one of these. In fact, you'll be unseaworthy, unwise. You'll be foolish to set yourself on the water in a vessel that does not have a rudder, a sail, or oars. Why? Let's look at it. We've got to find out what it does. Firstly, a rudder allows us to steer. So a rudder gives us direction. The sails and the oars give us power so that we can move. So Noah didn't revolt. Noah didn't strike. Noah didn't down his tools and say, but God, I have no rudder. I have no sails. I have no oars. How am I going to know what direction to go in? How am I going to know? How am I going to have the power to fight this battle? And there's a big lesson for you and I here. That is, when we come to Christ, we need to let it go. We give the power, we give the control to the Lord. Because faith is surrendering control to God and trusting in Him. Can I get an amen? amen. Can I get two amens? Amen. Yeah. Amen. And that's what it's about. That when you come to the Lord, you know, we move by faith. We move around and you know, we do things and we come up against challenges. But we don't back down in fear, in anxiety, in worry. Because we are in God's rest. And we've surrendered control to Him. We've given Him the reins to our life. We've given Him that control to know that we can trust in Him. Because this is what faith brings us to. Faith brings us to His rest that keeps us above the flood waters of life. Because even as Isaiah said it, when the enemy comes in like a flood, that is when God raises up a standard against it. And I believe that standard is, is His rest. It's resting in God to know that nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. That, Lord, a thousand may come at me, but you know what? You are with me, Lord. If God is for you, who can be against you? And I think this is one of the greatest lessons that we can take from this year, is that Noah didn't need to take the helm because he had faith that God was in total control. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, when we think we are in control, when we think we're in charge, I believe that's a, that's a, a real slippery slope that we begin to stand on. But I want to encourage you today that like Noah, when Noah entered in, like his name says, in rest, by faith, to trust God that he was in control. Maybe we've got rudders and we've got oars and sails in our lives. God wants us to, to give it to him. And even as Nick prayed about Auckland, you know, Auckland is known as the city of sails. That's what it's known as. But in God's ark that he built, there were no sails. Just total trust and dependence on God. So I don't know where you are in your life. Maybe there's things that, that you're fighting, you're battling. 
there's challenges that you're going through and you feel overwhelmed, you feel run down on every side. But God is encouraging you today and saying, hey, you know what? I want you to surrender. I want you to surrender. I want you to surrender it all. You know, there's a lovely hymn that I'm going to play for us now. And the words of the hymn speak about surrendering all to Jesus. All to Jesus. I surrender. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. We worship you, mighty God. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to Him, I freely give. Even as we're in the attitude of prayer and just focusing on the Lord, I want to encourage you. As we sing the song, just surrender to the Lord. Whatever it is that's holding you back, whatever it is that's challenging you, whatever it is that's causing you to be kept up at night, sleepless nights, worries, challenges, I encourage you, just give it over to the Lord and totally surrender, totally surrender to Him, knowing that He is in control, that you can have that perfect rest, that perfect peace to rest in Him. The invitation is there to come, and Jesus says come, even as God called Noah and his family into the ark, Jesus calls us to come, come to me, all those heavy laden and burdened, and I will give them rest. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can I invite you just to stand and just sing out to the Lord? If you want to sit, you can sit. All to Jesus.